today we're going to do tuning on the H Gallery Toolbox Max. I have the instructions open at the appropriate page because <sighs> I'm going to get this wrong. I'm not going to lie. This is the button combination for going up and down and round and through. Ah, I get confused every time. So let's see. All right. So as long as we don't press OK at the wrong point, I'm fine. So. Assuming your heater is in the off, and it needs to be in the off to do this, unfortunately you can't do it while it's running. We are to press the OK and the power button for two seconds. That gets into the password a bit, and the password is 3638. So, 3, and then changes the thing. 6, 3, Eight, and then press OK to get into it. Right, so your first one is the lowest possible setting. 1.9, so you can change that up or down. We're going to leave ours at 1.9 just now. And then you switch through them using the power one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and A is 10, because I don't, the 10 doesn't fit in there, so they put an A in. And you can just go back through them. So you can adjust them up or down depending on what you want. And then you press OK to finish. Right, so let me show you that running and a carbon monoxide value for what we have. And then we'll turn it up or down and make it worse or better and see what the results are. Right, so let's fire up. So fire up and we'll let it run up to power level 10 and once it's stabilised we'll take a reading and I'll bring you back once it's up at, up at 10. Okay, my heater is kind of plateaued at this 220, somewhere between 220 and 230. I'm sure I heard it cut back when I hit 230 so I said it, that's about as hot as it's ever going to get in there at level 10. So now if we come back and then employ the carbon monoxide meter, holding it in the exhaust stream but not like melty so we've got 30 ish parts per million depending on where I hold it you also have to make sure you don't heat the end of that up because that will skew your readings when it gives off uh, gas when it gets so hot but yeah somewhere Oh, well, maybe not yet. I think it's throttling up and down because we're at maximum temperature. Because we'll hit 30. Ah, it's hot. Yeah, it's starting to get hot. But like 30 is not a worrying number. Right, so we could probably lean out the top end a little bit. So we're not wasting diesel of it throttling up and down. I can hear it there, changing the output to throttle down the temperature to keep it under this 230. Right, so now we need to turn it off, and then wait for it to turn off and cool down, and then go in and change the settings. Right, just turned off. So, off, press OK and power. Enter. No, wait. Go back. Uh, three, six. Let's just put the first three when I come back. Three, six, three, eight, three. Okay. So you could go through them all and tune them all individually, but I'm not doing that just now because we know it's well. Me, I'll never run it at ten or one, and not the in betweens. You could, of course, go and set, let's go, let's take it down 0.2. So that's the top end, we'll take it down 0.2 hertz. And as I say, you could go through them all and start at one and then wait for the temperature to settle, take a carbon monoxide reading, move up to the next power level, wait for the temperature to settle, take another carbon monoxide reading. So you could tune the entire curve of the heater on based on the output. If you want to do, 
me, I'm just going to set a top and a bottom and call it good at that. And I've set the top. Well, what if, the process is the same whether you're choosing the top or the bottom. You get the diesel loops up to temperature, reduce the power to the level you want to tune, and then take your carbon monoxide reading once the housing temperature has stabilised. Right, so now we're set in with slightly less top end fuel, so we'll turn it back on and take another carbon monoxide reading once it is up to temperature again, because we're going like 46 degrees, we'll let it get up to 230, and then we'll see what the carbon monoxide reading is. Right, I'll bring you back. Okay, our diesel heater has hit the plateau of 230 odds. Let's go and take a carbon monoxide reading now. Of roughly the same spot. It's less. Not like a huge amount less, which is not expecting, only turn the pump down a little bit. But yeah, it's going down a little bit. Not a lot. A little. It could still do with coming down a little bit more. But this is the exciting and time consuming process of tuning a diesel here. Yeah, yeah, so you'd have to go back into settings, go through them all again, turn your diesel here, turn the, the pump down another little bit. But basically you want it to be sitting where you've got the least amount of carbon monoxide but also still a good amount of heat. Now, there is also a problem you may run into if you turn the fueling down too low. What happens is the burn chamber cools too much and you end up with the burn chamber sort of partially going out and then reigniting. And this shows up in the carbon monoxide meter as a spike. It'll go down to a low number, and then it'll rise back up to a big number, and it'll go down again, and it'll go back up and then down. And this is when you've got it set too low. So initially, if you've got a high reading that's staying high, that's a good sign you've got simply too much fuel and you can take it down a bit. But if you're getting an all over the place reading of up and down and up and down on the carbon monoxide, it's probably set too low. So I would try turning it up a bit to see if you can get the burn chamber to stay hotter and keep the, the burn going and keep the diesel uh, vaporised and burning efficiently. But yeah, so you find that more to be at the bottom end of tuning when people see a, a high reading of, let's say, 40 and they think, oh, uh, in, or they take a reading but just a quick reading and it shows a high number and they don't sit and watch and wait for it to see if it goes up and down. Sometimes you can hear it in the burn chamber, it will go boom, boom, boom on, you know, on and off, you can hear it. But tuning the high end is a lot easier because it stays hot and gets hot faster and stays there and your adjustments show up quicker. Would be nice if you could do it on the fly, but here we are, you have to turn it off and program it, turn it back on, wave the heat up. So it's quite a long process to do. But if it gets your heater running efficiently, then that's kind of what you want. And I'm hoping that once you've set it, and then when it uses its altitude mode, it adjusts those values and reduces your set values by whatever amount it decides. Again, that's another test. Any comments, questions, anything like that, please leave them down below. I'll try my very best to answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.